ever since Pharaoh uttered these words. Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice? Man has always tried to downplay the importance of God in their lives. We want a God of love. A God who will not scare us with our fallen nature. Or remind us to repent. Or challenge us to eat his flesh or drink his blood. Or not permit us to indulge in the pleasures we so crave for. We needed a God we can worship and still enjoy the pleasures of life. Who will turn a blind eye to our excesses? Where can we find such a God? Obviously not the God of the Bible. He is out of touch with the reality of our time. And certainly not the gods of the nations around us. We will not give in to idol worship. So we came up with a bright idea. Just like our forefathers did at Babel. This time we will create for ourselves a God. Who will be a mixture of godliness and worldliness. Such a God will be best suited for our times and our needs. And sure enough, we have succeeded in creating such a God. We would not name him Marduk, or Baal, or Zeus, or Diana. Neither will we call him God. We shall name him, Self. Having created our God, Self. We needed a religion to support it. A religion that like the God we have created, will merge worldliness and godliness. A new religion that calls on you to believe in yourself. Have faith in your abilities. Not in God. Rely on the strength of your arm. One that freely allows you to indulge in our excesses. One that awakens the holy enchantresses in us. One that encourages us to express our sexuality in any way that is right for us. And that is how we created for ourselves, self-worship to worship self. And today, self-worship is the fastest growing religion in the world. Are you caught up in this new religion? Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. While we think we have invented a new religion to suit our times, we have, in fact, awakened an old religion, which has been around since the dawn of time. How did the serpent entice Eve? Through words of self-exaltation. Since then, becoming a god unto ourselves has been the greatest temptation Satan puts in front of humankind. He cunningly emboldens us to take the authority that belongs to God into our own hands. That is self-idolatry. That is self-worship. But as I study this new religion of self-worship, I am amazed at how it fits perfectly with the characteristics of the Antichrist. Let us look at the characteristics of the Antichrist that would be revealed. Daniel 11:7 says, he shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers, or to the one beloved by women. He shall not pay attention to any other god, for he shall magnify himself above all. But a close look at the text shows that it fits perfectly with this new god and new religion we have created. Our new god, Self, pays no attention to the gods of our fathers, Jehovah Baal. Neither does it pay attention to the gods loved by women, Diana. Our religion only magnifies ourselves above all. And Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2 4. Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Today, there is a total disregard for God and anything sacred. Man has become a God unto himself. Paul, when talking about our fallen nature says. There is no fear of God before their eyes, Romans 3.18. Go through every country, every region, every state, every community, every home. From the pulpits to the seats of power. From the bedroom to the boardroom. 
There is no fear of God before our eyes. We only do the things that please this new God, self. We do not fear God so we do not obey Him. When you do not fear God, there is no motivation to listen to Him. A person who does not fear God does not take a strong stance against evil. We may not approve of the moral decay present in society. But we adopt a live and let live attitude. As I said, this new religion is just a rendition of a very old one. One that started around the throne of God. One that started with, I will be like the Most High. Romans 1 24-31 gives the most chilling sentence imposed on man. Therefore God gave them over in the desires of their hearts to impurity for the dishonoring of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is forever worthy of praise. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. Likewise, the men abandoned natural relations with women and burned with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men, and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, he gave them up to a depraved mind, to do what ought not to be done. These sinful destructive bondages, these chains, are placed on us because we love ourselves more than we do God. And so has been unleashed on the world, the spirit of murder, of gossip and slander. Addiction to drugs and alcohol, a desire to lie and steal, lust, a willingness to molest little children. All these are symptoms of a larger problem. Neglecting the worship of the Lord God Almighty for self-worship. There is only one way to overcome the self-worship spirit, and that is by death on the cross. Romans 12 1-2 says. Therefore I urge you, brothers, on account of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. God demands that we offer ourselves to Him as living sacrifices for His glory. Anything that hinders that self-sacrifice becomes self-worship. The self must die for God to reign. So this self-God we have erected must die. Jesus said in John 12 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Unless this self-God dies we cannot be fruitful in this world or in the world to come. There is no other way. To live you must die. The self must die for you to live. When Christ died on the cross, you also died. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory, Colossians 3 3-4. So begin to see yourself as dead to this deception of self-worship. Your new self-God is not interested in your life here on earth. Your self-God knows that you have a new nature. A nature that is born of Christ and is already seated at the right hand of power. He knows that is where you are destined for. And he will do everything to take that away from you. And he will stop at nothing to do so. Including offering you the world and everything in it. Just like he tried to do with Jesus. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Matthew 4 9. What is he offering you? Power. Riches. Pleasure. Fame. Success. He knows the value of what God has in store for you. The immeasurable riches of Christ's glory in heaven. But do you? Do you know how cheap you are selling that for a bowl of porridge? God bless you.